Hello there, and welcome to what's going to be episode 8 of my tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In this one, we will face a couple of things that are just now a necessary evil. It's going to be about the future of our fortress, because right now we are pretty we are pretty set here. We have a really nice economy going, we have way more alcohol than our people will possibly use in the next couple of days. And when we look down here, we have basically all the preparations for a good city to begin with. But what's the what's the issue now? The biggest issue our fortress right now has that a majority of our industry is located at very, very unattractive spots. So while that might be not much of an issue right now, in the long term of our, of our fortress here, this will be an issue. Because the thing is like that, this area here is not made of stone. That's a big problem for dwarves in general. This whole area here is basically a huge giant farming plot. It ain't the best farming plot because it's no cavernous ground. It's basically, uh, well, the, the worst cousin. But areas that have no stone environment don't have these qualities. We cannot smooth them. We cannot decorate them, and therefore they won't trigger any happy thoughts with our dwarfs. The thing is like that, these areas, they, they don't necessarily make your dwarfs unhappy, but they don't make them happy either. And that's, in the long run, a source of problems. Because right now, our situation is quite okay, but we're just 21 people. By the end of this episode, we will be most likely more people, and the real trouble with your fortress begins once your fortress grows larger. So today, we're going to focus into preparing some new apartments for our dwarves. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what makes your dwarves happy and what doesn't make them happy, and all these things, because for the longevity of your of your city, it's going to be tremendously important to keep these metrics under control. Because most of the time your cities will be stable and stable and stable and then they collide, then they uh, glitch out of control. Most of the time it's either a lack of food or a lack of happiness. And right now our, our, our fortress is actually prone to go into a unhappiness disaster in the long run when we let all our economy happen here in such an ugly environment. So we're going to change that. How are we going to change that? By moving our industry underground. We have already a nice little outpost here and we can continue and expand from that. So we're just going to dig ourselves a little bit deeper into the mountainside here and a little bit deeper into the mountainside there. I'm also going to introduce a couple of methods in this episode that you can apply to upgrade areas like these. But in the end, bedrooms and workshops that close up above the surface are, well, something you should avoid at all costs because like I said it doesn't make them necessarily unhappy but it doesn't make them happy either and that's a big deal in the long run to give you a little bit more of an explanation why that does matter so much the thing is right now our situation is wonderful and stable and everybody everything is fancy no problems we got we got happy dwarfs all over the place but as soon as a bigger thing hits our town let's say a bigger attack or or anything that has a long-term impact on our city all those people that have have a little bit of unhappiness accumulated up here will be struck by a long-lasting series of bad thoughts and that can spiral out of control that's why we gotta fix you know, why we gotta fix this up as soon as possible so what i'm doing here now is i'm going to use this little city block here 
as a foundation for the workshops that we want to go on over there. Of course, and that's something that I want to emphasize during this episode as well, especially, there is, uh, you, you could have done most of that right at the get-go, you know? Most of the decisions that have been made in the series were not really optimal. Like, uh, there was no necessity for us to set up shop that excessively up here and uh, not go down here and, and set things up uh, down here. It would have been actually wiser to have started down here instead of up there. But since this is a beginner's tutorial series, I wanted to replicate the typical decisions that you would do when you're just starting out. And that's for sure not checking out all these little things and uh, therefore I, I rather give you the options to to hot fix all these things you know so this hole here will be a big storage uh, area and we're going to make the same thing over here as well so let's see that's six that's seven that's five that's seven Whoa, that was not what I wanted. Accidentally clicked the minimap. And uh, these uh, both hallways, they will be important for our upcoming industry. We're going to use them. By the way, don't worry about the size of your halls. They, uh, there is no such thing as a uh, cave-in because your hallway was too large. Cave-ins do happen differently. We can have a little section about that at some point too, but generally said, that doesn't happen uh, just on its own. So we do carve out really, really large amounts of boulders non-stop. There's so many boulders in, uh, in the making of a uh, Dwarven city. And uh, therefore, it's really important to get yourself some usage for all these things. And... Uh, we're going to work on that today as well. So we're going to make those little bays here. For the workshops. Or never mind, not here. So the next idea now is to come up with uh, some sort of concept that will allow you to utilize your, your workshops decently. So here, yeah, let's leave it like that. So this area here is supposed to be for the Crafts Dwarfs. Want to have three Crafts dwarf shops, and here we're going to store all the finished goods at. Probably no need to make it like that. Let's utilize more of that hallway here. And there we go. And over here, the next hall is being prepared. So this entire thing here, I'm going to use and store my boulders at. This is going to be not enough for the entire fortress, of course, as usual. But what can we do? We have to start somewhere. All right. So the next thing, I'm going to set on up a, another stockpile zone for the Crafts Dwarfs to dump their items at. There we go. And we customize that as a finished goods pile. That's, that's gonna be okay. Alright. Now let's set up the Crafts Dwarf workshops. And that's going to be the start of our uh, of our economy now. So, no other blocks available. Yeah, whatever. Ah, oh, yeah, here shaded blocks. So another thing that we of course will require here is going to be at least one stone mason. I'm not sure if we're going to use more than one stone mason, but for now we'll leave it like that. And now we basically just reproduce what we already got open, uh, up there. With a nice side effect that we're producing lots and lots of new 
ores and uh, stones to work with. That's going to be actually quite great. So next stop in this area, we're going to set up everything furniture related. And we're going to say yes to all these things. And let's see if everything works on fine. We should now have all the stone furniture being stored there. I'm not sure if that configuration works as I want to. It's always the same. Whenever I have an idea of the configurations, I have to try out if it actually works like I think it should. So try to be as creative as possible. That's what I'm trying to say here. So here we have now other remnants of our mistakes, so to say. There's a lot of uh, work orders now attached to certain workshops, so we gotta be careful. For example here, these workshops for the stone worker, they're all attached to the stone worker upstairs. So our stone worker's workshop does not have a single clue about what's happening up there. Hey, look at that. They are transporting all the stone furniture now in there, just like I wanted them to. Amazing. I like that. All right, so we have now to fix up all the problems we've made in the first place. So here I'm going to replicate these uh, work orders now and free them up. That's uh, <coughs> nothing too exciting. We just add in here something like that. And then we have to reproduce that job. I'm going to pause that video for a short moment and I'm going to make these jobs unattached to the workshops because they're, that, there's nothing exciting to look at, I think. Now then, that has been fixed up. I have also unattached the jobs from the carpenter's workshop because as a matter of fact, that's of course going to be what we're setting up on the other side. A huge stockpile just for wood and for all the stuff that we are going to make out of wood. So <clears throat> basically we're now dragging all the economy that we had upstairs downstairs and that's going to lead to more happy dwarfs in the long run. So. The other thing that we can make up here, if you ever run into the situation that you just have to make it work in, in, in an environment like that, I wouldn't recommend it as, a, uh, as something to do regularly, but what you can do is you can go into the construction menu and you go into the flooring here, and then we're going to select preferably the most valuable stuff that we've got. How about CA bars? Right now we're sadly not we're sadly not featuring too many other valuable materials. And the next step is we're going to dig out the entirety of the walls here. And I think you already might you already might 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 already dawn on you where we're getting with that. They also dismantled the door in that process because Doors always need adjacent walls, otherwise they cannot exist. And here, well, sadly we don't seem to have enough silver for the entire construction here. Which is quite a shame, because that means... Well, wait a sec, we have exactly enough silver. Wonderful. Ah, perfect. So, now we reinstall that furniture here at that room. Keep in mind, if you want to create a good environment, you should look for well-made beds. The quality code here um, is something for itself. I'm going to explain that in a minute. So, just want to finish this little project here. As you see now, we're, we're building up silver walls. We have that ni nice, fancy-looking silver floor as well. And... Our dwarfs are again too stupid to build the last corner. Yeah, that's one thing I, I really should emphasize. If you want to make it, if you want a build to, to reach the corner, you really have to make sure they finish the corner first because they cannot build diagonally. And, uh, therefore, well, now we have to deconstruct it and then resume the construction. As you already might have no might notice here, Building apartments like that is a real strain. 
and we actually spend a lot of time and effort into that but technically we will have now a a home which is actually really really desirable and beautiful so here we go it's still designated as a bedroom and let's check out cog Kolbmal. let's uh, check out how happy this guy is so here we go and has a great bedroom so let's check out his neighbor Delia Rigoth Bebmal, what a name. So let's check out what Delia thinks about his bedroom. So, quarters. He's not even uh, calling it a bedroom, he's calling it quarters. I've never, never seen that actually. So, <laughs> let's see this guy here. So, but I think the, uh, the basic idea is, uh, yeah, he Amiga quarters. So this was hell of an upgrade. Basically, this way, you could create a happy environment for your dwarves up here, if you'd really want to. But at the end of the day, of course, it's way easier to create great quarters down here, because all you need to do for starters is to pick up these rooms, put the furniture in, and smooth them, and give them some chests and some other furniture. If they are decorated, like uh, here you see those little wing icons. If, if, it ha if an item has these wings and uh, and then a star or something like that, it's meaning that it's jewel encrusted. Especially these items, they, they really uh, bounce up the value. Next uh, more important thing is these little three arrows here. That's also excessively good. And... Uh, this way, we can create, with much less effort, a very comparable thing. So, no thanks. We, you sometimes get visitors that want to visit your place to vanquish monsters. Right now, we're not at that part of the tutorial yet, thank you. So, as you see there, our situation here is working on out quite nicely so far. And the Crafts Dwarfs. The Crafts Dwarfs here, I will set up with a, a very specific task. We're going to set this up in the work orders. I'm using now my Crafts Dwarfs to get rid of all those oh, excessive amounts of stone, because we really got a big problem with all that. So we're going to make now Rock Rings out of that, because Rock Rings are always something you're... Uh, you're your, your city will use in one way or another. Either your dwarfs will wear it themselves or you can sell it. And here we're going to use a other um, thing here. We're only going to make the production of rock rings on a set on go if we have more than let's say 25 non-economic hot rock boulders available. This way we will use these economies as kind of a clean sweep to get rid of all our uh, boulders. Right now our population numbers are really really low so there's not that much happening sadly. But in the long run we're going to be able to make this way a lot of uh, value or we're going to be able to create a lot of value out of our of or leftover boulders because there's one thing that really cannot be emphasized enough in the long run you will really require to find some usage for your boulders otherwise you'll get swarmed and your entire entire um, economy will get into problems. Either you ignore the boulders or you process them. I personally prefer to process them. So the next step we're going to do as soon as the next uh, bedroom quarter is set on up is we're going to destroy or unassign the old bedrooms up there to make sure that no dwarf accidentally moves into a shitty quarter <clears throat> sorry for the language but uh you you really do make your dwarfs unhappy with quarters that are not getting any any happiness in them because it doesn't 
imagine it like that. A happy home infuses your dwarf with some resistance against uh, crappy things in life. And uh, without a happy home, all the crappy things in life will hit him harder because he has no shields, no... Nothing. Therefore, it's really important to to give your dwarves these kinds of uh, luxury here. And whenever you put a piece of furniture on top of a smoothing job, the smoothing job gets deleted, so just you know. Alright, so no thanks, I don't want any monster hunters. Thanks though, buddy. Alright, and as you see here, the furniture stockpile is not getting uh, cleansed and uh, almost nothing's getting done for real. That's mostly a side effect of all the jobs that I issue. All those smoothing jobs are a hell of a job. And for some reason, your dwarfs, they, they are really hell-bent on fulfilling these. And, uh, well, alright, I... <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, because I have a top-notch priority on that. Whatever, it's okay. It's really important after all. So, next step, we're going to make sure that... Let's keep that boss room here alive. I made it happen, so I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep the dormitory here for now. We're going to remove it later. And now we're going to remove these here as well, just to make sure that no dwarf accidentally will take rest in a room. That's just not a... Uh... Oh, wait a sec. We don't want that for a removal. Fun fact, this uh, office here, we're go we should replace it, but it does the trick. Okay. And bit by bit, we're now relocating all of our industries like that. So <clears throat> let's get our metal pro uh, or metal processing industry down here as well. So here's going to be the smelter. Here I'm going to put down the finished ores. Then we're going to have the forge here, maybe something like that. It's all going to be nicely expandable. And now we can also just designate these wall tiles here, for example, for smoothing. And that already makes your dwarves a tad bit happier because they might happen to like their environment here. You know. But most importantly, let's check out those new bedrooms. Let's see if somebody already moved in there. So, all on Monomubar. Let's check on out how happy Olon is. So, he has fine quarters. There we go. Let's check out another dwarf here. There's a lot of bedrooms not even used yet. That's also very, very good. So, let's check out this one here, Ustooth. Where are you, little boy? There we go decent quarters so as you see there it doesn't really need anything but the most basic items to create decent quarters out of that and uh, engraving your rooms just takes a bit of uh, work there a little bit of time but it does not really cost you that much therefore I really like it a lot so let's bring up the smelter up here There we go. Then we're designating these. And when we're done with all that, we're going to dismantle the industries up there. So, let's tell our dudes up here to craft our, uh, another anvil for down there. Oh, no, it ain't furniture. My bad. It's among other objects. So, let's put the anvil on top-notch priority. And 
Now, it's just a uh, question of time. We're in the middle of winter now, so I guess once the winter is over, our city will see a high influx of migration into the town. As you see here, Make Rock Ring has been issued as an order now, because obviously we require that. And here we have again a case of job orders bound to a smelter, as you see there. Let's fix that. And there we go. Unattached them from the old workshop and attached them to every accessible workshop. This way the smelter will now just operate as we want it to. So we're going to drop down another metalsmith down here as soon as we have another anvil produced. And our next big job, uh, which we are quite uh, good at fulfilling right now, will be preparing quite nice environments and living areas for the dwarves to come, because there's going to be a lot of population in the next couple of uh, weeks and months. Thing is, our place is well set up. We have lots of food. We have a nice environment. It's all beautiful. It's only a matter of time until the new dwarves will hit town and it's pretty good to have apartments and all those things prepared so let's check this out we have five apartments here that makes a total of 10 that makes 14 that's not an apartment that's 17 so as you see there we we just barely got what our city requires apartment wise so we should go into something more efficient structure wise so let's do this we're going to dig out a very efficient work block uh, living block here although i gotta say this is uh you can pull it off uh, even more efficient basic idea this is going to be a block for 10 people with decently large apartments you can make that even smaller. I'm going to introduce also a smaller living block because I do know that we'll require them by the end of this. And another thing that we got to take care of is we need dining halls down here. So how about using that room here right away? That sounds like a great idea to me because the dining hall upstairs will be not as interesting anymore when we reduce the amount of uh, industry up there. So we should bring ourselves some dining tables downstairs here. The closer they are, the better. Because your dwarves won't be that unhappy if they have to take a longer walk for their meal, but they will become unproductive. So that's the much bigger problem because you will just lose time and that ain't a happy thing to lose time okay so with these uh, optimizations we're basically just waiting for new dwarfs to hit town because it's always like that there it there, there is a point in the development of your of your city where you're basically waiting for new dwarfs to hit town because you otherwise won't be that you won't be able to pro progress that much uh, further. So the other design that I wanted to show you is very, very minimalistic. You, you really go as bare bones as possible. You really just dig them a, a, a shaft into the, to, uh, into the wall, basically. And this design is very minimalistic, but it's also very room efficient. There's tons of other uh, apartment block designs that, uh, in this game as well. Just wanted to feature some easier understandable. So the basic idea is there goes the door, there go uh, and there go the other um, furniture items, bed and, and and coffer and usually a cabinet because the uh, these furniture items they don't block your dwarf's uh, movement. You can just uh, make your apartments really crammed and it won't be much of a problem for your dwarfs. It, it might be a problem for your uh, visual aesthetics though, but uh, well, that is as it is. So who's extremely unhappy? We have an extremely unhappy dwarven baby. How come? I guess that's, um, yeah, 
So the, this baby was severely traumatized by the death of one of our people there. There's not much we can do about that right now. That's the problem when something bad happens in your in your fortress. It's a pretty good illustration of that. So sometimes it just sticks to your people, and uh, you don't get get you you have a hard time getting rid of it in, uh, in your colony. So. I think that's a pretty great spot to end today's episode. So we have successfully optimized or relocated our industries, and I've uh, I think I put some put up some good points for you to understand why we don't want to operate long term here, and why it's better to be upstairs like uh, downstairs like that. And I hope you guys enjoyed that one. So in the next one, I don't know where we're going to head towards to. I really hope that we're going to see some more workers there. And it's then about time to explore new industries. We're going to go probably into cloth, or we're going to go deeper into mining and uh, exploring a little bit what we can make out of all the other metals and the alloy options that we got. Let me know in the comment section what you guys would like to see as well. I'm always happy to hear from you folks. Yeah, leave a thumbs up and leave a subscription if you haven't done so already. If you like that one, chances are you like the rest of the stuff I do as well. There's daily content and be my guest. Also, check out the playlist link in the description box below. So if you want to check on out more of this series there, that's the way to check out. And last but not least, there's also ways and means to support this channel financially via PayPal, Patreon, or buy me a coffee. And I'd be really, really delighted if you'd give them a look. So, that being all said, I hope you enjoyed the show, and see you all next time. Bye-bye.